tried so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it Take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. This is a reminder about this coming Saturday, which is the 8th of August at 9.30 for our Facebook Live Breakfast with me. I am so looking forward to this. It's a virtual breakfast, so we'll all prepare our own breakfasts, then we'll link up and we're going to be inspired as women of influence. Um, we've got a lot of exciting prizes that are lined up. 500 Rand pick and pay vouchers, sorbet vouchers, kolkacho, some really really nice prizes and we'll give you details of the competition closer to the time but head over to Kingsgate's Facebook page, like it, uh, see all the stuff that's been posted um, most days about this upcoming event and please join me. Invite sisters, invite mothers, uh, invite friends, start a watch party and let's celebrate our womanhood on Women's Day uh, and so that will be the 8th of August at 9.30 I look forward to seeing you there Thanks ladies When I lift my voice When I lift my voice in shout Every wall comes crashing down I have the authority Jesus has given me When I open up my mouth Miracles start breaking morning. What a wonderful morning this is today and I would like to take this opportunity and sharing some of the word with you. This morning I'd like to read from Psalm 100 verses 1 and 2. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing as a praise and worship leader in the work of God for many years 
it was my pleasure to be able to use this ministry and the talent that our Father God has blessed me with to give him all praise and honor and glory. And today, just looking at these scriptures, knowing that I really enjoyed those times when I was leading praise and worship because I was able to give it my all. But the Lord woke me up early this morning um, considering this scripture and thinking how much I enjoyed this praise and worship. And then from that, it led from one thing to the next and how I've ministered over the years. But then the Lord also showed me how worshipping and working in the kingdom is more than just one dimension and how we need to look how we can in whatever ministry we are serving what else where else can we improve the kingdom how else can we advance the kingdom what else can we give into the kingdom and we know that the one area that is always needing more is finances and Yes, we have, gone, we have all gone through rather difficult times these last while during lockdown where finances has been quite difficult. But we need to remain faithful to God's work. We need to be, remain faithful to His Word and to keep on giving. Give with whatever we can. God does not need our finances, but God needs us to be faithful to his work and I want to encourage you this morning keep being faithful as you worship the God worship Father God through praise through song through ministry of giving in whatever aspect you know what is dear to your heart but give into God's ministry don't stop I want to encourage you don't stop because God wants to bless you I'd like to end with one of my other favorites, Psalm 150, verse 6, which says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So continue to bless and praise Father God, giving to his ministry. Father God, I just pray that you would bless your people on this day. Bless them this week. Bless them in their work. Bless them in their families, their home life. Father, there where they uh, interact with colleagues, friends, family. Bless their finances, O oh God. This day I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I lift my voice. When I lift my voice in shout. Good morning everybody, it is my wonderful privilege to share the, the good word of God with you this morning. And the sermon that I want to be uh, bringing to you this morning, I believe is going to stir your heart. And I'm trusting God that, uh, that you're going to be one who's going to be standing in the, in, in the battle ranks of God, wielding the great weapons of war that is placed in the church for us to extend His kingdom and bring glory to His name. And this morning I want to be speaking to you about one of those weapons, one of the greatest weapons in our arsenal, and that is uh, the name above all. That is the name of Jesus. But before we get into that, um, just a couple of thoughts that you know I, I want to just uh, uh, share with you. Did you know that Israel of old were to fear, respect, and worship the name of God, the name of Jehovah, the name given to them to uphold and to respect? Did you know that? Did you know that when God sent them into exile, it was because they disrespected his name by the way they behaved and rebelled against him and his commandments. Did you know that King David said, He leads me in paths of righteousness 
for his name's sake. It's very important for us to understand these things because the name of God amongst us is very important. It carries weight. And we're going to be looking at, at more of that now. Do you know that where the name of God is to be feared? Or rather, let me say this again. Did you know that where the name of God is to be feared, loved and respected, there his presence and power is displayed? Did you know that? So wherever the name of, of God is feared and respected, there his presence is. There is power is displayed. Today, there is another dimension on earth where demons tremble and fear the name of Jesus. It carries power and authority. We were ministering to a lady just uh, some years ago and uh, who, who had cancer in her chest. We, conf we confronted the curse of cancer in Jesus name and broke its curse and commanded the, uh, um, the cancer to leave her body. And of course, this was a demon stronghold and the demon left her with a little commotion and she fell to the ground. We then lifted her up and, and, and asked her to, to, to go away and to go and examine herself. And she came back a little while later and rejoicing in the Lord because the, the lump in her chest had disappeared. The pain had gone and she was in absolute relief from this cancerous uh, um, occurrence in her chest. And she still went to the doctor to have it checked out, and there was no more and there was no more cancer. This was all done in the name of Jesus. This I want to share with you today, and that is the name of Jesus, a name given to us by Jehovah that we are to live up to and cherish with all our hearts. That is the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter one and verse twenty-one through to twenty-three, we're going to take our reading, and verse twenty-one says. And speaking about Mary and when Gabriel had, had visited Mary and, and he declared this to her and said, And she will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be, might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Jesus. Now, did you get that? Did, did you get that scripture? Let's read it again. And she'll bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. So that was the God-given name to Mary and to Joseph to name their son Jesus. But then it goes on and says in verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us. Very interesting. They were to name Jesus, but someone else, other people would call him Emmanuel, God with us. There was something about this name that was to stir the people to say, this surely must be God amongst us, Emmanuel. So he was given the name, but the name was to stir the nations of the world, to declare God is with us, to declare Emmanuel. What a powerful name. What a powerful tool in the church today. When we begin to understand the verse that we've just read, we begin to see that the name of Jesus is no ordinary name. It is a name that, is, that was given by God. It was God breathed. Although it was a common Jewish name, actually meaning Joshua, given amongst men. But when God breathed it, there was something, there was another dimension to that name. In the Hebrew language, we call him Yeshua, but in English, we say Jesus. Other nations, they, they call him Jesu and, and, and the like, and the like, but it's still the same root. It is God breathed. It is no ordinary name. It's not a name given by his mother or his earthly father, not a name inherited by genealogy. It is a name that will stir people to say, Emmanuel, God is with us or God is among us. That is the power behind the name of Jesus. It stirs people to acknowledge that God is amongst us. Look at Hebrews chapter, four, chapter 1 verses 1 through to 4. God in various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Has in these, day, in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being in the brightness of, the, of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, 
as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, a more excellent name than the angels. The name of Jesus is a name given from the throne of God. We've got to understand that. It is not, it is no ordinary name. It is a name better than any angel, a name better than any heavenly host or anything that ever was created. This name is above all those names and carries the backing of heaven. When Jesus walked the earth, he made total havoc of the kingdom of darkness by healing the sick, casting out devils and raising the dead. The world not, did not know what to do with this man called Jesus the Christ. In John chapter 9, there's the account of a man who was born blind. Jesus spat on the ground, made mud and put it on his eyes and, and sent him off to go and wash in the pool of Siloam. And you know, the, the, the wonderful thing, the world was so astounded at what had happened. This man, Jesus, was doing such extraordinary works by doing extraordinary things and then sends this man to wash his eyes and he comes back seeing this declaration was made in chapter 9, verse 32. Since the world began, it has been unheard that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. Jesus impacted the world by what he did. He was an extraordinary man with an extraordinary name. In verse 35, 3 to 39, Jesus then finds this man because he had been cast out of the synagogue because of his encounter with Jesus Christ. So Jesus finds him and begins to speak to him. And in verse 35, he says, Jesus heard that, that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment. I have come into this world that those who do not see may see and that those who see may be made blind. And Jesus was saying, I've come to impact the world and here I am. So Jesus went out of his way to pick a fight with the devil and draw the attention of the world to himself. I am Emmanuel, God with you. Up to that point, Jesus was just another prophet in the devil's eyes that needed to be squished. The devil wanted to get rid of this prophet, as he had done with all the other prophets you know, in, in days gone by. But what he didn't realize that, that was that after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus was about to unleash the greatest weapon of war against the kingdom of darkness this world had ever seen or experienced. There was something extraordinary that was about to take place after the devil thought that he had got it right to kill Jesus. But that was all part of God's plan. And yet Jesus re reveals something, or rather reveals a truth, re reveals a mystery, a key mystery that, that was kept in heaven and reserved until this point in time, in John chapter 16, where Jesus begins to expound on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But then he gives a key. And he says this in John chapter 16, and verse, reading from verse 23. He says, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you. So he says, you're not going to talk to me anymore after I've, I've risen from the dead. But he says this, but most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Up until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. And yet Jesus was saying, I'm going to give you my name that you may pray directly to the Father in my name. And whatever you ask him, he's going to give it to you. That was a most astounding thing, that the, the a most astounding statement, if I might, if I might say, that, that had ever been made you know, to, to, to that whole nation of people at that time. That Jesus was saying, you can pray directly to the Father and you're going to do it in my name. Wonderful, isn't it? Praise God. So Jesus was saying that we, the church, could use his name as a weapon to pray, to combat the devil and work mighty works. Whatever I ask the Father in the name of Jesus. After his resurrection, the name of Jesus became a mighty weapon in the armory of the church. 
In Mark chapter 16, yeah, we see Jesus had to come and, you know, correct them. They had to come and correct the church, the early church of those days. He had to come and put them in line and shake them up and wake them up. And I think today, many of us in church need a wake up, a shake up when it comes to this matter of the name of Jesus. And look at how Jesus had to, in a sense, discipline them, discipline their thinking, discipline their hearts, discipline them in their walk before him. And this is what he said. Later, he appeared to the eleven. This is after he had been crucified and he had um, risen from the dead. It says, later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. They begin to question things. And I think there's a lot of questioning going on today. And, uh, and God is saying, get rid of the questioning and have faith in God. So he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. We got to believe the scriptures, people. We got to believe the testimonies. We got to believe that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. It is our person. It is our testimony. It is the conviction of our hearts. It is the very ground on which we stand. It is the reason we can call ourselves Christian because our Savior is a risen Savior. He's in the world today and He's alive forevermore. And and He lives within that within our hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. And our witness is true with Him that we are the sons of God. Yes. And so he, and, and then he says to them in verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is saved will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name, in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And these were marks of the early church. You know, Paul, in one of his, uh, one of his journeys, we know he landed up on the island of Malta, and that whole island got saved by a snake bite. Remember, they were sitting around a fire, and as they sat around, the Bible says a snake came out and bit Paul on the hand. And, and, and Paul looked at it and he shook it off back into the fire again and everybody waited for him to drop down dead, but he didn't. And then people began to declare certain things about Paul, but it was opportunity. These signs will follow them that believe in my name. You see, Paul was dwelling richly, a living relationship he had with Jesus and he's dwelling richly in that name, declaring the power of, the, of that name. You know, we got we got to realize this, that there is threefold greatness. And I'll say it again. There is threefold greatness in the name of Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 8 through 11. Very well known, well quoted scripture. But you've got to understand the threefold greatness in the name of Jesus. Verse 8 says, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God as a whole highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the suggestion here that there is a name known in heaven, that rather there was a name known in heaven that was never known anywhere else. And that was the name of Jesus that God was to, to unleash into the earth that had a threefold dimension attached to it. What was it? It was a, it was a name reserved for such a time as the, appearing of a, as the appearing of the Son of God, who, were, who was given this name. And, and at this name, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and even in hell. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is master. He is ruler of all three worlds, all three dimensions to the glory of God the Father. He is the ruler of heaven. He is the ruler of earth. He is the ruler of hell. Because why? He came from heaven. He has a heavenly name. He came to the earth 
And he demonstrated power over, over all the works of the devil by raising the dead. The lame were, were walking. The blind were seen. Even walked on water. And then he humbled himself to the point of death. And even while he was, while he was in the grave in hell, uh, you know, corruption and, and hell and demons must have swamped him. You know, and really just, you know, clutched him, held him down. It was shouts of victory. But because of his name, because of his obedience, because of his sinless life, because of the blood that he shed, he was raised by the power of the Holy Ghost uh, uh, victoriously from the grave. And Colossians tells us that, you know, that he, that, that, uh, that he rose victoriously and made an open spectacle of them, open spectacle of the de devil, disarming principalities and powers. And he, and he rose victoriously. And he took all our sins in and nailed it to the cross. And that victory that he won for us, he gave to us. Now he says, in my name, in my name, whatever you ask the Father, it shall be done. Because I am ruler of heaven, earth, and of hell. This earth may be under the sway of the wicked one. But you know, people, we are the church. And we weren't born on the back foot. We weren't born to sit down. We were born to stand. And we were born to put on the whole armor of God. We were born again to advance in the kingdom of God. With the high praises of God in our mouth. And the Lord will work with us with signs and wonders following. It's time to stand up and use the name of Jesus as a weapon of our war. Hallelujah. It is, it is this precious name that has been given to the church. We have the right to use that name against our, our enemies. That is the devil. We have a right to use it in our praise as we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. We have a right to use it in our praise and in our worship. We use this name because it is a name that is held high in high esteem in heaven. Praise God. When we begin to use the mighty name God, the mighty God-given name, all of creation pays attention and the demons tremble because they know they have a short time. Do you know that the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost back in the day of Pentecost brought the world to a standstill. And Peter had to stand up and preach and point the new way out to them. They were in absolute, they were flummoxed. They were in absolute confusion. And they stood there and they cried out after they heard Peter. And they said, well, men and brethren, what shall we do? We don't know what to do now. You know, there's, there are these strange happening. You're speaking in tongues. You're speaking in languages. And, and you're untrained men. And there's a power at work here. What must we do? Now, verse 37 of Acts chapter 2 says this. And I'll read from verse 37 through to 38. It says, And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? We don't know what to do. You see, it was almost like they'd come to a bottleneck in their faith, a bottleneck of their understanding of, of God. What shall we do? Then Peter said, said to them, repent. In other words, turn about, turn, he says, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, total transformation had visited the world as the name of Jesus was declared. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. No more the way of Moses. No way, no more the way of the tradition of the fathers. But we've got to go by way of the name of Jesus. And in that name, you will be saved. Wherever the apostles went, they declared nothing but the name of Jesus. It was an important weapon in their warfare. There was power in that name. Look at Acts chapter 4 and verse 10. And you read to verse 12. And yeah, and yeah, um, again, Peter's declaring and he says, Let it be known to you all, uh, uh, to you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him, this man stands here before you whole. This was the man that sat at the gate, beautiful, begging alms. And Peter and, and John came and went past him and said, silver and gold we don't have. But such as we have, we give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up, walk. They declared to him and that happened. And the Bible says he went walking and leaping and praising God in the temple. And the whole temple was in an uproar. And yeah, he tells them, he says, he says, um, this Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, 
whom God raised from the dead by him, this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders or you leaders of society, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there sal a salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we might be saved. Wow, the name of Jesus was a powerful tool in the, in the church in the early days. And it is the same name that avails to this day. The name of Jesus. We need to know and understand and use the name of Jesus in all our walk. In, in, or rather, let me say, in our everyday walk. We must realize that the name of Jesus is backed by heaven itself. we got to understand this. It is backed by heaven itself. It carries the very power of God to save the souls of men, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to work miracles. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we may be saved. And I mean saved in every way a person can get saved in the name of Jesus. It is heaven's gift to man who seeks salvation and a manifestation of heaven on earth. No wonder Satan trembles at this heavenly name given among men. No wonder the world has adopted it as a swear word to try and dilute it, to try and make it into nothing. It is what it is the only heavenly name or let me say holy name, if I may use that, use, use that phrase that is used as a swear word. We don't hear people say Muhammad. We don't hear people say Buddha. We don't hear people say Hare Krishna or any, any other religious uh, um, name or, 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 or saying, but the name of Jesus Christ is used to try and rip it apart. And the reason why it's been used, because they fear the demon behind that fears the power, fears the, uh, fears the power of the name of Jesus. The spirit world fears that name and they do not want that name to be made known. Satan will do anything in his pathetic power to water down, degrade, lie about and make a mockery of the name. Of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our risen King. He is deceiving the world and yes, even the church to a certain extent, not to call upon the name of Jesus Christ and use it as a, we a weapon against his kingdom. People, we need to name that name and we need to say it out loud from our hearts. Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you say that in your heart today? Can you, can you, can you let that name resound off your lips at this very moment in time? Can you stand out in, up in your home and raise your hand and say, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. He is Lord of my home. Jesus Christ is risen indeed. And I praise that holy name. Can we give him praise? Hallelujah. We must learn to call upon the name of Jesus. We must use it as a weapon of war. Declare, declare it out loud and be unashamed. Have faith in the name of Jesus. In, in Acts chapter 16 verse 18. Again, here we see the importance of the name of Jesus. And how it was declared and used on Paul's missionary journey wherever he went. And he preached in that name. He ministered in that name. And he used it as a weapon of war. And yeah. Now, and yeah, Paul uh, was was marching through a certain city, and the Bible says that there, there was a a girl that had this, had a spirit of divination that followed them wherever they went. And after after many days, Paul became became annoyed. And in verse eighteen of Acts chapter sixteen, it says, "But Paul, greatly annoyed, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you." In the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. And of course the whole city was, in, was perplexed. But um, it's amazing that he could say in the name of Jesus come out. And he came out that very hour. That demon had to obey the name of Jesus. And you know the wonderful thing was he had to obey it from a man who had a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself, a man that had been transformed by the power of God, washed in the blood of the Lamb, whose name is written down in heaven and empowered to use that name and declare it. The spirit, the spirit world has to listen. And you know what? Because they have to listen to Paul, they listen to you and to me who are born again. And we can use that name. Praise God. Amen. For the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus was a very important tool to the early church to have impact on the nations <clears throat> and bring them to salvation. 
I remember the first time I prayed for someone to be healed uh, in the name of Jesus. I was really taken aback. Do you remember the first time you prayed for someone to be healed? And as I was preparing these notes, you know, just the thought came to me. Wow, I remember the first time I prayed. In fact, uh, it was a, a man in box, but we prayed for his knees. He had, he had terrible knees and he could hardly walk, always in constant pain. And I remember I, I was just a new believer and I put my hands and I'd heard about the name of Jesus. And, you know, the, you know I'd seen people pray, so I prayed. And, and I prayed, and as I prayed, this man stood up, and he said, the pain's gotten, and he walked around, totally healed. I was amazed that in the name of Jesus, I could lay hands on the sick, and they were healed. You can do it too. What about the first soul I led to Jesus? I remember that too. You know, and, and what a, and what a, you know, what a moment that was to see a person being transformed before my very eyes. I just saw it was like the lights came on in them and they were transformed and they walked around telling people that they'd just given their hearts to Jesus and they'd never been the same again. Their life was totally changed and they fell in love with Jesus. You see, when we are praying in the name of Jesus, we understand that we are using the authority he gave us to carry out his will here on the earth. The Holy Spirit goes into action and works with us with signs while following when we use that name in faith, believing, knowing that we serve a risen Savior. The early church preached the name of Jesus, used it as a weapon against sickness and the, and the devil's kingdom. They were on the front foot at all times. They were never backing away. And God worked with them, the signs following. And we've got to be people of faith on the front foot, daring to believe God for miracles. They were not hopeless. They were not in despair or even wondering whether God was even listening. They knew God was listening. When you begin to use that name in faith, all of heaven sits forward, takes a step forward. Even the angels take a step forward because they want to see the kingdom of God advancing. And God is looking for people like you and I. We have faith in him to believe him for the impossible. Yes, God is looking for us. And he's saying, who will rise up in the name of my son, Jesus Christ? Who will take that name and declare it to a lost soul? Who will take that name and declare it over a sick body? Who will use that name to bring glory to me? Will I not even work with you? Will I not even be with you? I can just hear the Lord saying that. God is looking for men and women who will stand up in faith and take the shield of faith and raise it high with the sword of the Spirit and, and be, begin to declare the wonderful works of God and see miracles happen in their lives. You see, the early church took up the name that was given to them and used it to the glory of God. People, Jesus' power is unlimited. We should be unlimited in our asking. For he said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it. Let's have faith in that statement. You might say, but Mark, you know, I've been praying about that for a long time and this and that, and you've got all kinds of things. People, we've got to have faith. We've got to believe God. Get into some fasting and prayer if necessary. But know this, that our God is alive, is powerful. Jesus is risen from the dead and we have that name and we can use it against the weapon as a weapon of war. We've got to have faith in the ability of God the Father to do exceedingly abundantly those things that we could ever ask or even think. We've got to have faith in that. When you pray to God the Father in heaven, have faith in the name of Jesus that he will answer you. And I want to close off with saying this. Where are you today in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Is your heart failing you? Are you one that perhaps is, uh, you know, in that company, you know, that after Jesus had risen from the dead, he had to appear, appear, appear to them and say to them, Hey guys, I have risen from the dead, you know. He who believes in me, he who believes in me will do great works. And in my name, they will do great signs and wonders. You go read Mark chapter 16. Are you one, perhaps your heart has grown dull. Perhaps right now you can say, Lord, light the fire in me. Help me, O oh God, to do great exploits for you. Help me, O oh Father God. Help me, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father God, that I may stand up in faith today and believe you. Is there sickness in your home? Are you using the name of Jesus against that sickness? Are you wielding the sword of the Spirit and, and declaring the word of God? 
Are you having trouble at work with ungodly bosses or ungodly people? Use the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus when you pray. Pray in the name of Jesus and take authority over those demons and declare the peace of God in your office. Use the name of Jesus. It is there as a weapon of warfare. Pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Ask for help and you will see signs and wonders flowing. Perhaps you're not saved. Perhaps you're one that's listening to what I'm saying today. And you're going, wow, Mark, you know, I didn't realize all of this. Well, you know something the Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you see, we read that in Romans chapter 10. So if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and he rose again, and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says you will be saved. So why don't you call upon that name right now? And why don't you say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And I believe that Jesus died and rose again. And I confess right now that he is Lord of all. That he is the risen Savior of the world. And I believe that you sent Jesus to come and save my soul. That he shed his blood. That, that my sins may be washed away. Are you one that is has faith in Jesus right now? Well, then ask him to forgive you. Ask the Father. Ask the Father right now. To save your soul. Ask him in Jesus name. Invite Jesus into your life. And say Jesus be Lord of my life. I believe that you are the son of God. The savior of the world. Yes call upon his name. And ask him to be Lord of your life. Right now. And so father I pray Lord God. For all those who are calling upon your name. Father I pray for those who are sick. In Jesus name. We take Lord uh, even uh, uh, authority over every sickness. And over every disease in every home right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord every weakness in the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Father I declare healing. In Jesus name. Come Holy Spirit. We ask you in the name of Jesus. To take the wonderful healing power. Into every home right now. Lord God where people's hearts and hands are outstretched. You, I pray Lord hear those cries. Lord we pray. Oh Father I pray Lord for, for financial help Lord God for people Lord who are Lord struggling financially right now I ask Lord to help them in Jesus name Lord those are struggling Lord by Lord all kinds of fear and oppression in their lives and depression in the name of Jesus we say to the, 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 the spirits of oppression and depression be gone with you lift and go and get out of those homes right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we declare peace we declare wholeness in Jesus name and Lord, and those who are calling upon your name, Lord, for salvation, I pray right now, Lord, oh, Father God, grant them mercy, grant them repentance, Lord, and visit them, Lord, and touch their lives that they may be born again in Jesus' name. And as we close off right now, I want to invite the, those of you who are in need of prayer. If you need someone to pray with you, there, there is a number after this, uh, this uh, sermon that you, can, uh, that you can call and there will be somebody there to pray for you. Please call that number. And, and, and in calling, the, uh, calling that number, call upon the name of the Lord with that person who's going to answer you. And believe God for your miracle today. Because it's all in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That name that is above every other name. I bless your home and I bless your walk. In the Lord, in Jesus' name.